Here we go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the original Next Level Gaming Podcast. We are back after uh, another <laughs> another uh, wonderful hiatus, thanks to uh, thanks to my computer. Uh, but we are back. Computer problems be damned. How's everybody doing? Woot. Okay. Woot's a good one. I, uh, you know, work, as always. Yeah. True. So I, I actually... Mine. I know this one now all too well. Yeah. So, uh, I'm back I got at... a gut punch in my Lions game today. Just kicked right in the nards on that one. Hmm. That was no fun. Um, but, but yeah, happy to be back. Yeah, it is good to be back. Yeah, and Star Trek starts tonight, too. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's Star right. Trek Discovery. At, uh, there, was, there was a Star Trek marathon on uh, BBC, I think it was yesterday. Got to see Memories. some of the old, old stuff. Did you DVR it? No. No. I've got a couple of seasons on uh, on Blu-ray from the original. Mm. Well, we went a couple of seasons, though. So, yeah. Um, so, oh, I got to change. Uh, while we're talking, I'm going to try to fix the uh, chat. You can see what people are saying, but you can't really see what, uh, can't really see who's saying what. Unless you, <laughs> unless you know what their uh, icon is. So Got I'll futz with that while we're talking. Well, uh, you do that. I'll kick off of what I've been playing then. Yes. Let's start we all know there. Because we all know what Peter's been playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be an easy one. But Which is good because right. I want to... Yeah, I that's them... dirt, dir- dirt Rally. <laughs> right. I did. I've heard that's really, really good and very hard. I have heard yeah, that too. Yeah, it is. It's very actually. unforgiven. It's definitely... Uh, yeah, if you have a chance, uh, check it out, Wong. Or get the... Uh, uh, what's it called? The Game Pass trial? Yeah. I'll try it out. I keep holding off on that, and just for this, I, I don't know what I'm waiting for, but I'm waiting for like that certain magic titles to get in there, and, and then dip. Really? But, you know, Yeah, right. I think <laughs> though, when I get my um, when I get the X, I believe it comes with a month. Oh yeah. So I'll be all over it, all over that. But uh, this past uh-huh. little piece during our hiatus there, I was uh, I finished up uh, Sonic Mania. Which, if you're an old school Sonic fan like me, if you love the old Sonic games, it's yeah. the best Sonic game in probably ten years. Oh yeah, and uh, it was fa- fantastic soundtrack, uh, good challenge. I didn't <coughs> didn't go all <coughs> excuse me, didn't go all Super Saiyan with it or anything, but uh, got two of the emeralds. I'll, I'll be back some some other time. But I got through the through the through the levels and saw the the basic ending, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take that and run for now. Um, been working on the Shadow Run. RPGs, those are those are actually pretty sweet for uh, mobile games. Uh, I've been working on the Recore expansion. Uh, you know the t- the tank section and the the uh, swallowed sea, I think it's called. Uh, that is um, pretty neat, pretty pretty decent, pretty uh, some some cool additions to the game, some neat new mechanics, uh, weapons changes, uh, and just having the tank to zip around on is pretty cool. So I've been enjoying that. And um, and then put together a little retro something special for tonight. Yes. Oh, let me double check too and make sure that it's there because that's I've got it. I I can't remember in redoing my machine if we moved it over to where it should be. Right. So if it's if not, I mean it's easy to grab. But um, yeah, this is gonna be a a really nice one. Um, yeah, I got it and cool. looking very forward to it. So um. Yeah, so, all right, I don't know what's up with this chat window. For some reason, the name of the person in chat is... Super dark. Yeah, very super dark. I don't know why, but we'll, uh, 
We'll figure it out. All right. So, I know what I know what you boys have been playing. You guys. You guys have been just playing. A, just a little bit of Destiny. You just said Dirt Rally. That's yeah, what I was, yeah, that's what I was going to say. You were playing a little bit of Dirt Rally. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sparrow Rally. It's, a, it's, a, it's an unforgiven racing game, rally game. Apparently it's, it is. I it's have good. Not, I have not played it yet, but it's good. I hear that it uh, is. So. Yeah, definitely worth a uh, check it out. Chocolate covered? What? What's chocolate covered? I think he's asking Cooper. Oh, oh. yeah, he's reading the the chat. Yeah. yeah. But also Destiny 2. It's been taking way too much of my time and probably Nate's too. You know what? And Nate, Nate keeps me up late at night. And back. <laughs> Uh, HDK. It's all yeah. worth it. Yeah, it is. It, Good it, times. Yeah. Yep, you'll have that with that type of game. I, the first one, I, you know, when I had a crew I was running with on the regular, it ate a lot of time. I mean, I had a, a fair number of hours, and I, and I have friends who have thousands, thousand plus, 1,500 more in um, the first one. So they, I, haven't, I haven't seen them since. <laughs> I should probably check on them because I haven't uh, heard yeah. from them since the second game, but... <laughs> <laughs> you haven't heard from them. <laughs> they call the police and then do a health and safety check or something. Yeah. Well, so we didn't really, really get a great opportunity to run it down um, in the last couple weeks. So, you know, it's impression time, boys. And so uh, as much time as you've been throwing into it, tell us what you've been doing. It's one of those games that... Feels like it should have been the first one. If this was the first one, probably would have gone crazy over this one because I wasn't even going to buy it, but HGK taught me into it. It's funny. Yeah, I think you got. I think <laughs> I got you into it. I got mm-hmm. Super Cooper a little bit, you know, more fire on his belly, and then he won the uh, short pass prize. Uh, nice gift gift card, so he ended up getting it as well. And good times. Very nice. But yeah, I mean, it's a place like Destiny. Story was good, much better at least. You know, you feel like you're, you know, it had a good story from from A to Z. Yeah. And uh, public events are very enjoyable too. I heard they did a nice job of improving those. Yeah, and it had a lot yeah. of Cade, which is never wrong. And that's uh, yeah, true. Fillion, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He. He tends to he tends to uh he tends to bring a lot of life to uh to his stuff. Yeah, he's good. He's pretty the, uh, Did you I don't know if you saw but uh Jez of um Windows Central there, Corden, he had tweeted out uh you know, to Destiny, what is this emote or this uh dance, this um cosmetic or what do they call him? I guess it's an emote. But it was uh the it was the chicken, it was the bad chicken impersonation from um Arrested Development, Lindsay's to be exact, if you're an Arrested Development fan like I am with the ka-cha, ka Oh, that's what I was out. doing. I didn't know what that was. Yeah, that's <laughs> from Arrested Development, so that was kind of cool to see. Cool. Repro. What's up, Repro? Hello, Repro. Uh, it's good to, see a lot of, good to see a lot of our old Woody. friends. Hello, Woody. Mm-hmm. Bass. Soup. Even saw, I think, Brewer worked a little bit. Earlier. Yeah, he was first in. He wow! First in. So, you do you know you guys know how much I I love our chat yeah. room boys. Yep, they're yeah. the best. They are. All right, I might uh, I might have to play with a different uh, chat thing later. It's fine. Hey, I I'll I'll take the fact that my camera seems to work. Yeah. Knock on wood. I'm not going to jinx it too much. So, um, uh. The the story in Destiny is it actually legit? Yeah, it's a mm-hmm. lot longer too. Okay. Like if you ever got it, we would definitely play with you again if that tells you anything. Uh, well, you know, I it's not that I don't know. I I, I hear much better things about this Destiny than the last Destiny. I, I will I will say that. Um. I'm yeah, because the last Destiny, you know, got good, but the uh, paid DLC uh, expansions. 
Well, I, yeah. It's taking King and other stuff, you know, that those were like, <clears throat> and now Destiny 2 is of that caliber. That's good. good. That's how it should be. That's how, and that's mm-hmm. why I. That's why I like. While Nathan said that should have been the first game. Yes. So, you know, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's just. I don't know. I, it, Another it, thing, main factor that you would appreciate is there's not fifteen hundred achievements, and a lot of them do only revolve around the story. Like yeah, there's nice. some to mind and grind and everything, but there always is for every game. But you can enjoy. it. The, you know, like you said, I think someone said they only get Call of Duty for the campaign. Same for this. Really? You don't have to play the whole thing. Really? No, you can enjoy the campaign. Mm-hmm. How long is the campaign? Not terribly. So I'm my, my, the one time I did hear from that friend <laughs> uh, was him checking in like the next day he was through the campaign. Uh, the thing is like when you do the quest, which extends, I mean, it's Kind of to me, it's part of the campaign. I yeah, mean, it's taking some time. I, I, he did the day off, though. You know, so I think I think he just marathoned it. I think he <laughs> I think he did it in twenty twenty five somewhere in that range. So I mean, it's, there's some hours there. Yeah. Honestly, for a single like you know for a story type of thing, I'm getting to where I don't want I don't want a hundred hours of story. Not a Witcher three. No. Well, yep. so there's a difference, though, between... I don't, I don't know that I could do another totally open-world game like that, but, um, you know, a... I don't know. I'm, I'm getting back to, to linear roots a little bit, and maybe that's part of it. Um, you know, I... Like, for example, um, thanks to our great friends over at Tick. Um, I somehow magically won a copy of uh, uh-huh. Wolfenstein. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the one time I only put in one uh, <laughs> one entry into the Gleam. It just happened to be. <laughs> and yes, reprobate, I took Advil. Um, and um, Super Cooper, I'm uh, just not talking about football right now. Um, and that's going to uh-huh. look great on your Xbox X, Mike. It is. Yeah. With my 1080p television, so. no, it's you, still gonna look good. Yeah, so you did yeah. hear that. Um, you did hear that they are going to show off uh, some of those 1080p downsampling benefits fairly soon. No, I haven't. I yeah, yeah, to that. that's supposed to be coming. Yeah, yeah. So that's something that that I think is extremely interesting because there are still a lot of us out there with 1080p televisions and. You know the 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 reasons for upgrading to an X for those people are still something that Microsoft has to kind of has kind of push. So if they can, that would be wonderful. Um, now, not that it seems to have to, because apparently it's it's doing quite well pre-order wise. So you know there are a lot of interest. There's a lot of interest in the console, but it will be nice for us to be able to see, you know, a game like Wolfenstein and what it's going to do for those of us with, you know, peasant televisions. I'll have one. That's where I'm starting. Like I said, the X is going to be my reason to upgrade. Yeah. I mean, what I've seen with the uh, PlayStation Pro, <coughs> 4 Pro on the Horizon Zero Dawn, when you, you know, yeah, you got my 1080 1080p TV when you, with the down sampling and stuff. I mean, it looks looks better than so 1080p. So and so that's that's a um, so that's gonna be a next year thing for me as well. Um, I figured you know because I know people ask, well, why are you getting the Xbox One X before you get a PS4 Pro? Uh, to be honest with you, the the Xbox One X just on a system level has those enhancements that you don't get on the PS Pro as a standard. So for me, it's going to be more beneficial for me to upgrade my PS once I get the 4K TV, which is going to be next year. And so I'll I'll end up getting that then. So... Oh, uh, what's up, Annihilator? I told, cool. I promised you, man. I said, come hell or high water, we were going to podcast tonight, and here we are. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, 
Uh, so yeah, Death. I mean, well, you see, what's funny is I see a ton of people playing Destiny. So it's not like it's mm-hmm. it's not like nobody's bought it, but they they do see it has seemed to have been a smaller sales percentage than the first one. So I don't know what I don't know uh, what yeah, to I don't make know. of that. I haven't, I haven't followed that honestly. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, it, they're, it's it's a um, they've sold a lot. I mean, and uh, it's most likely going to be September's number one uh, number one game. But I think they're thirty percent below the first game um, sales wise at this point. Mm. Um, right. I'm trying to think. I mean, they put out. Activision put out a, a first week press release about how great it was doing then, but um, I believe that they are thirty percent below what last uh, what the last game was. Now, like I said, all that said, it's still going to be a monster game considering how big mm-hmm. Destiny was. Yeah, so I've also seen quite a quite a few people who bought it like later on, not like you know the first week, but you know after that. The second week or whatever, it's like yeah, all my friends are playing it, and uh, yep. okay, I caved in, you know, bought it. I've seen quite a bit of that. Yeah, and I, I think it came out during the PS3 and the 360 and the Xbox One. And yeah, but I think that I honestly don't think that's I the I think the amount of people that bought it on the 360 and PS3 were not were kind of negligible at this point. Um, now sure. the other place where they've yeah. where it seems to have had a, um, a a big downturn was in the UK where um, it's at least fifty percent down from the original. Mm. Now it's still the biggest UK release of twenty seventeen, but yeah, so yeah, Super Cooper's kind of yeah thirty percent down on physical sales. Now how much of that too is. Um, how uh, much is digital? Is digital because Sony did say that. The PSN, uh, as far as PSN network goes, it was you know one of the highest downloaded games ever. So I'm interested to see overall how well the game does. So, but you guys are enjoying it, which is the most important thing. Yeah. Yes. So also, I think a good you know, I think it should have done, or maybe it did, really well because I don't know what other big releases got released in the same time period. I don't think any so you know no so i don't know i don't know we i don't think we should read too much into 30 percent down on physical sales yet yeah it's gonna have legs anyway yeah well that's funny it is kind of funny because um nyler says too much like halo for me but i think that's i think that's a draw and i think it's a draw because it's you know people can People can say what they want, but people want Destiny or, or uh, Halo, rather. They do. Yeah. If they mm-hmm. didn't, um, then a game like this may not. You know, it, it, what have I said? I've said I uh, uh, Bungie uh, complained about Microsoft only wanting them to make Halo, so they left Microsoft and went off and made Halo. I mean, yeah. I, 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 it's it's only half. I mean, it's only half joke. It's. I mean, Peter and Nathan, you guys have been playing it. Honestly, how much how much Halo does it feel like to you? There's a lot. Yeah, and, and it's the nature of the studio. I mean, it's uh, yeah. I mean, it's yeah. It, it's what it's they some. Do. I mean, you can definitely you know. I don't know. If, yeah, I don't know if I hundred percent agree though. But it is. I mean, it's uh, what they. It's it's you know. It's what they do. It's what they know. It's it's you know. It's the. I'm not begrudging them on it, except for the fact that I just I think it's ironic. But I, I just but, yeah. it, it they is. know how to make a beautiful game too. So right, yeah. But I mean, you know, you tend to see the same, the same aspects, the same you know art style. I mean, I could definitely see a lot of the same art style. Hell, I think yeah. we I think we saw I think we saw Master Chief's pistol in there at one point. Yeah. There was a couple of uh articles about that a couple of posts flying around about that so i mean again it's what they know it's 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 bungie it's like it's it's like asking it's like asking rare to make a game that looks different than any other rare game i mean it's just 
it, it's right. it's what it is. So <laughs> yeah, what and what I played alone, the campaign, yes. But I played the rest alone, no. Uh, Witty with the uh, Witty with the stealth uh, advertisement for uh, for. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> the WFC show. Yeah. <laughs> That's my boys right there. <laughs> so, and in fact, I think they're all in there too. Witty, fast, and soup. That's our. That's our, that's our. That's our. That's our team. Yeah, yeah. podcast fam. Yes, they are. Man, they. They. I tell you, they. They do great. I'm. I'm really happy for. I'm really happy for them too. So you know, those guys are. They're our brothers and. Um, their success, their success is great. So, um, anyway, uh, uh, and, and I apologize everybody as I type to, uh, reprobate. I have a sort of a headache this evening and, um, so I'm trying to power through it with some Advil and some water. Um, so if I seem a little off, it's not because I'm, you know, it's not because I'm not into, into the podcast tonight. I just have a slight headache. So. Just own D uh, on the show. Yeah, right, right. Oh, God. He took 1,400 milligram of Motrin, and now he's like this. He's only like that. <laughs> so. Oh, man. So, anyway. Um, all right. So, how much how much more on Destiny 2 do you guys want to talk about? I don't I want to talk about it. I just want to play it. Yeah, right. Because I opened the floor. <laughs> I opened the floor. Yeah. This is... Yeah, you did. You know, you guys... There's, there, half the podcast is playing, uh, is playing Destiny. So that's right. a good thing. Yeah, even the Crucible was fun, especially like yesterday. We were like ripping it. We had Cooper and uh, Fastback, Nate and I. We were like, man, we were dominating. That was awesome. Awesome. Playing well as a so, team. Cool. All right. All right. So then we'll move on. Um, and, and oh, uh, by the way, I wanted to um, you'll. I wanted to make a quick uh, announcement. And nod, and he's in the chat room. But um, you guys notice, you know, there's four of us here, um, and uh, uh, so Frankie, um, our good friend Frankie, um, has decided he's uh, uh, he was gonna head back over to uh short pause um which is his home it's you know our our other podcast brethren and uh kind of concentrate on some things going on over there and uh uh you know he's got some projects and stuff going on so um it, he's he's gracefully uh gracefully bowed out from here um however i just want you know to say to you know uh to him and Everybody who knows the history of, of Frankie Ayler on this podcast that uh, I have, uh, I'll always he will always have a place here. He is uh, uh, he will always be part of NLG. Um, you know he like uh, like you, Peter, um, came to me in a very low time with the uh, podcast and. Um, you know, he really, he kind of saved it. Without without him, I don't know if I'd be here, honestly, right now. You know? And uh, he helped me uh, kind of get this to where we are today. Um, you know, helped me keep it going so that I could find, um, you know, you and Nathan and, and Juan and uh, we could turn this together into something fantastic. Um but uh, you know, I, I just I want him to know uh, how much I deeply appreciate what he's done for this channel, what he's done for this podcast, and what he's done for me. And so I'm gonna we're gonna miss having him on. Um, you know, from time Mostly. to time, from time to time he'll he'll sub. Uh, but uh, you know, short pause short pause is his home. That's where he you know that's that's his. That's his show, and you know I, I get it. So, best of luck, and uh, you know stay in the pot, stay in the chat room at least. I can make him a mod. Yeah, could, wouldn't that be yeah. wonderful? <laughs> everybody, everybody who talks about sports will get banned. <laughs> yeah, nice. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Football. But. <laughs> so. All right. Let's move on. Um, in a in an, in a move that uh, 100% apparently signals the end of Xbox and the uh, the sale of Xbox from Microsoft and the incoming doom of uh, of all things console and gaming. Um, Phil Spencer has been promoted. So Phil has been placed or has been anointed or appointed rather to the what do they call it the um, senior leadership council of Microsoft, which consists of of course CEO Satya Nadella and all the surrounding VPs um, of uh, uh, you know of of Microsoft. So you know he's he gets a seat at the at the adult table, uh, and it's. Kind of interesting because we think, and I'm still kind of fleshing out the all the, <laughs> the facts, but uh, I believe that he no longer um, reports to Terry Meyerson. I believe that he now reports directly to Satya Nadella, hmm. and uh, you know this. Uh, This is going to be what I think is where we're going to find out exactly where Microsoft is in the gaming world and exactly where Xbox fits in Microsoft's plan and and what they believe the future is. Because it's one thing for for Nadella to, to say it, and he always has. He said, well, you know, gaming's important and, you know, such, such, such. But to make a move like this to bring uh, to bring Phil's voice to to his leadership uh, roundtable and to and to get somebody out of his kind of out of his way um, is quite interesting. And I'm I'm curious as to where we go from here, where and and where you know where Microsoft is 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 headed. So first off, congratulations to Phil. Um, but I'm curious what uh, you know where we are here now, and um, you know what the next couple of years hold. So I will uh, open yeah. it up. Yeah, definitely very interesting because now you know now he has a seat on the same table as all the other guys, the office and you know <coughs> windows, etc. So mm-hmm. now he will have an equal voice and hopefully equal importance. So I think it's it's good for Xbox. It seems like it's in fitting. And if it's what... and if it's good for Xbox, it's good for the Xbox players. Yeah, right. It seems like it's uh, in fitting with what Nintel has you know has said about Xbox being a critical part of the Windows, mm-hmm. or I should say the uh, Microsoft, you know, the whole thing. Uh, it all you know, it's given what he's actually done. It, it, I, you know, there, there's there's been mistakes made. There's things I would say, you know, things he said that maybe weren't totally thought out, like, you know, his his words on Tomb Raider before it went uh, multi-flat, you know, uh, some things like that. Um, but overall, I mean, like, considering what he was handed in 2013, uh, yeah, you know, this was, this was almost a given to me, you know, um, I, if I had known it existed, to be honest. Right. I mean, I don't follow it that closely, but, you know, him getting promoted after what he's done with Xbox since 2013. I mean, from a consumer point of view, as one who loves his Xbox, what that has evolved from from what it started, what I can do with it, the features on it, policies like like um, uh, wish lists are coming, but uh, refunds, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. That uh, you know, he it, totally deserved, totally deserved. What? And I think what you know, I think where people need to to you know need to concentrate on is um, he he was he was kind of handed a shit sandwich, and it's it's been a interesting turnaround. I mean, he's finally sort of you know the X is his console. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's it's one of those 
it's one of those one of those things where he's begun to put his stamp on the company now and again. So I'm gonna and and Annihilator is definitely um, one of Microsoft's critics, and we love him for that. And uh, and it, it's great because it gives us you know other you know uh, our chat room should be that diverse. So here's what I want to say about something he just said because it was kind of in my mind. Phil Spencer should be sacked. It's his fault they have few devs. So what I want to say to that is we're going to find out if that's true or not. We're going to find out exactly who pulled what strings in that hierarchy. Because, again, Spencer reported to Terry Meyerson. Terry Meyerson is the EVP of the Windows and Devices group. So Spencer's budget came from that. Now it doesn't. Right. Now now he has I'm assuming being that he uh that he reports directly to the CEO of the company that he has a lot more decision making power than he did before. Now it, it uh, he could be right and it could you know it could be what it is um you know lionhead was a business decision right or wrong was a budgetary decision um you know Meyerson we just don't know where his um you know was Meyerson the one that told rare they had to make fable legends you know i we don't know that and we're about to find out I look at it this way. Now there's no excuses. Now there are no there are no roadblocks. Now there is Spencer and the CEO who says gaming is a core piece of Microsoft, right? Yep. So if that's true, then this should change within the next year or two, this should change the strategy of Xbox going forward. And we yep. should see, you know, the, uh, that revitalization of, of their gaming uh, platforms uh, and their, their IPs and their, you know, their business interests. Um, you know, they got, they did, a, they, they, you know, for, for what it's worth, there are some very heavy positives. They did buy Minecraft and Minecraft is still, just printing money, mm-hmm. um, you know. So you know, they have they have the Xbox One X, which, by all measurements right now, is doing extremely well in pre-ordering, and you know could be a lot more popular than even I gave it credit for. So, um, you know, I got into Minecraft for the first time in a while yesterday, and uh, man, it's crazy how much. There is now in Minecraft that didn't exist when it was just, you know, Minecraft when it wasn't a, an MS property. Right. There's the there's the store and the realms thing sounds slick. Like I don't know if I have a real need for it because I don't have a lot of friends that are playing Minecraft. But the idea that you can have the rented server simply done right in the game UI and have private access for up to ten people that's that's you know uh, dedicated. I mean that's great. That's fantastic, and it's gonna and, and it's gonna be a money cow for them. No, oh, yeah, especially with crossplay and and stuff like that going on. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Stick Figure brought up PUBG. I mean, that's a hell of a move. It's mm-hmm. a hell of a move. So you know, it's it's not that they're not. I disagree with some of the. Th- Everybody knows that I've had my disagreements with some of the moves Xbox has made. Everybody knows mm-hmm. how I feel about their first party development and stuff like that. I'm, I don't keep that a secret. You can go back and watch watch previous podcasts of me with my camera that just does this, mm-hmm. and you can see how I feel about about it. And to an Here extent, anyway. to an extent. I side with some of what Annihilator says. I'm not necessarily arguing that with him. What I'm saying is if there is a substantial change in the way Phil gets to do his job, we're going to see it. Mm-hmm. Right. And you guys, the three of you, know 
what my job has been like the last what six months now, mm-hmm. and you guys know that not nearly in the same way, of course, than Phil Spencer, but um, in my job, in my little genre of job, the very kind of same thing happened to me. I had two bosses above me, and when my boss of boss sold the company and the new folks came in, I now, my job changed, and instead of reporting to a director who reports to a uh, managing partner, I, as the manager, report directly to my company CEO. So I kind of, and, and when that happened, I got to do some things I couldn't do before. So again, I it's just, it. could it be? Yes. Could it stay status quo? Yes, absolutely. And if it stays status quo, I am going to be right here complaining about it and and such. But I'm I want to see where this goes now because this is to me this is a huge move. No, I agree. Like you said, we'll find out what Microsoft really thinks about gaming and about Xbox yeah. because yep. There's really, there's, I mean, as much as it's, you know, it could be a really good thing for Xbox. I mean, it's just as simple that, you know, from there he makes a different decision and they decide to, you know, get out of doing consoles at some point or whatever. It's, it's all possible. Sure. And what, what he said in, in, in this particular order is <coughs> Xbox Live, <coughs> new hardware, excuse me, and, and then games. Right. So now it's time for games. So, right. You know? And, so let's see this ne- these next two years. I mean, you know, it's either like we get to see games and and feel we trust, or it's like you know, maybe right. at that point he needs to get sacked. I don't know. I wouldn't mind seeing him be a little more, um, you know, loosey goosey with the uh, sequels. Yeah, give give I give IPs that chance to grow because yeah. even even the Almighty Uncharted didn't start out really as all that super huge with the first one. Don't blast really, me, Uncharted. Uncharted. I, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying, uh, it's um, yeah, the, it, it it didn't take off real. I mean, it, it, it did well. It must, was not. Dog on that, yeah. it was, no, it, was it wasn't not. what it is. The first time out the door, which seems to be what they're looking for. It seems like they're looking for that big, that big hit right off the bat, the home run, the smash, and you know, like, you look at something like um, Sunset Overdrive, and it wasn't that. You know, and I, the Xbox people let me down by not buying it because it's a fantastic game, but it wasn't a smash, and they kind of just walked away from it. But on the other hand, you had you know Uncharted given that other chance, and it came back and it became that smash. And I think that um, you know a game like Recore, it has potential. They need to really you know give it another go. Now, would you give that another go with a different dev, though? Um, I don't know. Maybe a different engine? Because, I mean, don't get me wrong. They, they kind of went the... the um, we fixed it so it's better route. And it is better than it was when it launched. Consider no out. But would you trust Armature with that again? I think so. I think... Um, I mean, they've shown they can do it. They've shown, and this is probably a learning experience for them, and the core of what they had planned, I mean, the, the, the base part of the game, you know, wasn't changed greatly in the edition. It's all quality of life stuff. It's all, all you know, stuff that would go into a sequel if it were to get one. It's all the, you know, what they learned from the first time out. So, yeah, no, I, I give it to Armature. They created a, they created a likable character with likable, like, ally friends, and uh, you know the level design is good when it comes to the platforming and tough. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd definitely let them have another swing at it. Can't remember. I don't think either. Peter, you got recording you? Yes, I do. Have you gone back to it since the? I played just a tiny little <laughs> bit. I unlocked that, you know, that fourth robot thing, <clears throat> and that was about it. Then other games to over. Yeah. I kind of went back to it a little bit. It's, I, I, it's still a, 
I think the the issue, the biggest issue I had, wasn't necessarily um, a lot of the gameplay mechanic because I thought the gameplay mechanic was pretty good. It was damn loading times, and they've definitely yeah. fixed that. They definitely fixed that. Loading times are fine now, so I'm I'm good there. Um, so anyway, uh, so that's that's the news on Phil. I'm I'm um, I'm interested to see. Where and, and and you know, folks, those of you who think, oh, this means you know, no more Windows games. Um, yeah, no, they're they're not. If anything, they're they're gonna double down on um, on Windows. They're gonna double down on uh, Play Anywhere. Um, and so, if you're looking at that as a as a negative, um, you're not gonna get much of a of a reprieve from that. If you don't care, like. Said most of us, um, then you know it's just just more more uh, more of an audience out there. But I think uh, it's interesting that gaming's getting a seat at the big table in MS. That's what it really comes down to. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Like 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 it's it's Nadella, it's Nadella acting on his words. He's put he's putting his money where his mouth is because it's not the first time he said gaming is a core piece of of Microsoft. He said that he's been consistent. Now he's showing it. Right. So, so we'll see. All right. Next on the docket, a uh, something I know. I think I know Juan's been dying to talk about. Kinda. I mean, I have an opinion anyway. All right. So. Um, so we missed in in our absence, we did miss um, a Nintendo Direct, and in that Nintendo Direct, uh, there was some you know new Switch information, some release dates, some things like that, but came a couple of surprises, some things that nobody was expecting, from our good friends at the Todd Howard Company, <laughs> and so we are Switch uh, Switch owners. Congratulations. You are getting a copy of Doom. Well, you're not getting it. You are <laughs> – it's not like it's under <laughs> your seat. You get a Doom and you get a Doom. No. Right. It, Doom is coming to the Switch uh, this year, uh, later on in the fall, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. Sounds and about right. Something like that. And then next year, you are getting Wolfenstein 2. So – a lot has been made of this, and uh, Juan, I'm actually going to let you take this because you know a little bit more about the the overall piece of this than I do. Okay. Well, I mean, it was it was picked up with a lot of um, fanfare, and I think part of that is just you know, gasp. It's third party, and it's coming to it's coming to the Switch, and it's it's triple A, you know. So that's that's huge, you know. And and personally, I've said many a time. Uh, you know, the only thing wrong with my Switch is I can't play everything on it. And then I'm looking at Doom, and I'm thinking, maybe I don't need everything on it. Because, uh, you know, and, and these are two two cases here, you know, with Doom and Wolfenstein. I we'll want to say first that uh, well, I was a little puzzled at first it was Wolfenstein 2 and Doom as opposed to, like, Wolfenstein 1 and Wolfenstein 2. Because Wolfenstein is, you know, uh, th- is a little bit more narrative based and you've got stealth sections and you've got things like that and that game I don't think would uh, feel the hit of a 30 frames per second performance as as much as Doom will because Doom is very very focused on speed and aggression and and fast gameplay I mean it just moves very fast and um, I think that's going to hurt it I think that's that's not great for that experience it's, it's taking away from what Doom is so I was a little curious that it wasn't Wolfenstein, but then it was pointed out to me that Wolfenstein um, TNO was ID5, which isn't as well optimized. So that made more sense to me afterwards. But Doom was going to be a tough sale for me. I love my Switch, and I love Doom, but I own Doom on my Xbox, which means I own it for my coming Xbox One. So if I'm going to revisit it, I don't know that I want to pay double dip for a downgrade. Like, if I'm double-dipping, I'll upgrade, you know, if I get a remaster's on that. But to d- double-dip for a downgrade, and I, and I know 
I'm gaining mobility, I'm gaining portability, but it's it's a game I've already played through. So, you know, there's there's enough on the Switch that I don't need Doom to be on the Switch. I've got I've got two on the to do list right now. I need to get um, Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle, and and that Steam World Two Dig looks really good too. Uh, so why would I spend on Doom? Now you know Wolfenstein Two comes along, <coughs> and I may decide that the you know, frame it, it's obviously going to be uh, an inferior version of what I can get from my ex. Um, but I may decide that it's my first playthrough. You know, maybe I want portable for that. I, I, I don't know that I will. But but the Doom one really, I really don't get as well as much because of that whole double dip. It's I mean, a lot of people. I know not everyone has it, but I can't see double dipping for a downgrade <coughs> when I'm going to be able to play an upgraded version at without having to buy the game again. I can't say free, but, uh, you know, because I'm paying for the console, obviously. But without having to buy a game again, I'll be, I'll be playing Upgraded instead and, and get something else on, on Switch. I almost wish that instead of this type of support from third party, that they would not do these versions of, of games you can get better elsewhere, but one-off, uh, you know, bespoke, tailored to the console games. Mm-hmm. The only, uh, the other thing you're not getting on there is you're not getting Snap Map, right? So, um, however, I, I <coughs> you know I've read a number of different um, impression articles on it. You know, be it from um, you know U.S. media, be it from Eurogamer, be it from you know uh, even some non uh, game related uh, media, and um, I have seen a lot of people that say the the frame rate the halves frame rate doesn't affect it like you think it does. Like it's still fast, it's still doom, it's still really good. Now part of that may be because they're also locking it down to 720p, whether it's docked or undocked. I don't but, think it's even that. I think it is. I, I, they they have they have said it's going to be 720. Both, uh, they they did make that. Um, they did say that I think earlier this week. So, um, but you know, even in like in gadgets, as the gameplay is very identical to Doom on other platforms. Um, so you know, it, some of it could be placebo of just it's been a year and a half. Um, you know, I, I you know it, it's been I'm sorry, it's been two years now actually. Um, you know, now Digital Foundry, they're, they were a little more, um, uh, down on it because it does also stutter a bit and things like that. Um, but I've, I guess the people, the lay people who have picked it up and played it at, I'm assuming Gamescom or, or something like that, or even at whatever the last, not Gamescom, but whatever the last, um, uh, show that Mike that uh, Nintendo had this stuff at, they seem to be okay with it. If you're looking at it through the viewpoint of it's a it's a handheld device, right? It's it's gonna be kind of mind blowing for a handheld device when you think about what handheld devices have offered thus far. But when I when I look at side by sides with it, you know it's 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 yeesh, you know. And I think it's I think it's just you know you're talking about momentum, you're talking about popularity. You know, it's not going to get the same treatment that Halo Five got. It's not going to be what's the cost of sixty frames like Halo Five got. It's not going to be what was the cost to this game of going portable. It's going to be oh look how awesome this is portable. When uh, it pays a pretty good price, I've seen, I've seen you know side by side comparisons, and you're looking at loss not just loss of resolution but loss of, of textures. You're looking at again half the frame rate means it doesn't play as responsively. You know, playing on Joy Cons. I don't hate the. Yeah, Joy-Cons. I don't know how that's gonna work. But I don't hate the Joy Cons. They're they're functional, but I, you know, compared to an Xbox controller, no. And, and I don't own a Pro. I'm sure the Pro would be fine. But yeah, I just I just don't know about double dipping for. And and honestly, on the e store, does anyone think this is gonna be thirty bucks, forty bucks? No, fifty bucks. I don't know. It's a not. 50? I don't know. It's. I don't know. I mean, there seems to be. I could see fifty. It seems to be a switch tax when we see other games that, that are multiplat go. 
seems you pay a little more for for games on Switch than you do right. elsewhere. So I don't I don't know. It just Doom doesn't excite me for the Switch. Um, I, I have to see what happens with Wolfenstein, but I, and I love my Switch, but I, I I don't I can't see spending on Doom when I have yet to get uh, Kingdom Battle or or Steam World Two. I, I would rather put the money into the, into something I can't play better elsewhere, like Mario Odyssey. Well, I, you know, to the to the point about that versus, you know, Halo. I think part of what you're gonna see though is, I don't think nobody expected the game to come out on the Switch, which is why I think you're gonna see more of a, you know, more of a of a, hey, it's not half bad, you know. Yeah, cut it a break. Yeah, because nobody expect that's just it. Nobody expected it to come out. I, I didn't. I, I, well, I was I was surprised I Skyrim was coming out. I think that's just underestimating the Switch. I mean, having played with it when I, I you know, it's yeah, it's it's not what the consoles are, but I think it's more powerful than people generally perceive it as, which, you know, that happens. People did that with the Xbox, so, you know. Oh, yeah, and so to see, you know, to see a game like this and run as well uh as it can on the Switch and be functional and fun for people who haven't played it on another console, um, I think that's. I just think that's why you're going to see more of a, uh, you know, hey, not bad, good job, guys. Yeah, I, I suppose. I just the Switch it hasn't. You know, it's done really well without this. It has. It's done really no well. Doubt. It is doing its own thing very well, as opposed to doing the other consoles' things not as well. Is what I'm driving at. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it needs it. No, but it doesn't hurt to have it. See, that's just it. When you when you don't need it, it's gravy to get it. Yeah, there's that. You know, um, and so, like I said, I just think you know, especially, and I would never have expected Wolfenstein, especially when there are so many other companies that are that are literally. Um, passing on their games on this thing because it's not I it, it, you know I think Square Enix is still trying to figure out any way they can to get their Final Fantasy 15 on it and they just they can't figure out how to do it. They they just recently uh again like today said they don't have plans for it now. Yeah, cuz they just they can't get it to run. They can't get it to run. So to to see something like this which is so fast and I think I think such an underrated game overall. I mean, you know, it's the the joke. Uh, the the joke that I had on Twitter was, "This is my game of the year, 2017," because <laughs> I didn't get the chance to play it last year. Last year, so, um, and it's still such a good game now that I'd put it up against. I'd put it up against the slate of games that's out now. Um, so it's just, I think, it, I think there's a wow factor to. Oh my God, the Switch is actually getting a game that. That it actually relevant and means something that you know you didn't think it was going to get. Yeah, no, I, I get the surprise, and and you know, again, it's kind of kicking in the door for third party AAA, so it it gets the hurrah. I just, like I said, I I, I don't want to repeat myself more. It's just, I, I it's just, it's a tough sell for me. I'm, I'm sure I'm down to see what else, what else can be brought, but particularly given what I have and 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 will have, I just I just can't. What about you, HG? Especially not, at, especially not at sixty dollars. True. Do you have Do you have Doom, Peter, at all? I have Doom on the Xbox. Yeah. Okay, so double dipping wouldn't be. No. I, I I don't think of any games double dipped unless I get them for free through like PSN or or you know, Live Gold. Gotcha. <clears throat> I don't do it terribly often, but I did double dip for um for Shantae. On I had it on the X, and it came on the Switch. I was like, yeah, that's a game that I would pick up and play mobile, you know. So I did that, and you know, the experience is identical. And that's good. That's how it should be. So, and that's if you can if you can get there, then that's that's how you maximize your audience. So, well, it's I th- and I think this game will do well on the Switch. Because oh, I yeah. think there are a lot of people that buy the Switch that don't buy another console, even though a lot of people have it as a secondary. I think there's, you know, I think there's a market for this to work. 
So oh yeah, I, I mean, there's there's enough of them out there, and 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 it's what else? What does it compete with on Switch? What is like it that's going to draw nothing draw that I can think so, of? So, so yeah, it'll do it'll do just fine. I'm just I'm just looking at it as a as a, as an owner of Doom. Um, oh, I can understand that. I can, I totally get that. I mean, I I don't double dip on games either. Um, so no, I totally understand. So. All right, so that's that. Um, however, you did, uh, you did have a nice um, demo of a Switch game you are interested in. Yeah, ten times, ten, ten, twenty times more excited for this Switch game than Doom. And that would be uh, the absurdly named Project Autopath Traveler. <laughs> absurdly named, indeed. I, I hate the name. Love the game. Um, I, I played through the demo now uh, twice for each chapter. Once just when I got it, and then once I felt like I felt like doing some uh, some video of it and catching it. Um, just because it's, I just I love the game. Uh, it gives me some legit Final Fantasy four, Final Fantasy, okay, Final Fantasy two and three on the uh, on the good old SNES. Of course, which is the goat and. Um, I love the art style. I love the the pseudo. I think they call it HD 2D is what they're they're referring to it as, but pseudo 3D and old school sprites. Uh, even the static, you know, character art like we see here in the for Old Barrack, um, it's great. And the this I love the. I've always been kind of a sucker for the super depth of field thing, like uh, Lost Lost Odyssey had. And oh, so right. I love that. Um, the writing. I've seen I've seen some some critiques of the writing, some criticism. Um, it has a little bit of cheese going here and there, but that was true of the old games too. They told a great story. Like when you look at like a Final Fantasy three, that's a great story. Love that with the villain winning and the the team coming back together, fighting each other after the world is destroyed. Great. Um, but the the t- actual text, <laughs> you know, they were kind of limited, and they, you know, it wasn't always top-notch because that but it related a great story uh, sign and the phantom train all that stuff and i think this this harkens right back to that um the combat is 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 interesting it's different uh, it's turn-based but each of the characters have their own special abilities and, and those abilities change depending on which weapon or ability you're using you can there's a there's a uh, kind of a, a budgeting mechanic if you will where uh, every turn, you gain a boost point, and you can then bank up to five of those boost points and put those into an attack or a defense. But you may need to try to use some of those on a defense if the enemy does their power attack or whatever. So you have to kind of budget whether you want to leave yourself open or save up for the big attack. Uh, it's it's just real quality stuff, and the and the soundtrack is, is super good. Um, anyone who follows my Twitter knows I do a. Uh, <coughs> a daily music pick. You can link them. You can click from my pinned tweet and see the whole shebang going back 170 plus picks now. And um, and I, I picked uh, Old Eric's theme just recently. It's real good quality Square Enix product. I'm really excited for it. it does look. It does have that that cell shaded kind of look yeah well i mean the characters are sprites in the old style and i love that um here in the combat they they go to a <coughs> excuse me uh, almost like that artwork like you saw in the, in the menu screen with the highly detailed kind of almost hand-drawn look cell for the for the enemies and such but the character retains their sprite look and then the um the pseudo 3d the, the depth and it looks great handheld um you know the demo is the demo is uh, an hour per chapter. Each uh, Olberg story is is pretty basic. He's a, a knight who um, he, he lost his king and kingdom in a coup, and he kind of lost his way, and he became just a a swordsman who kind of looked over a village until some bandits came, and uh, he ends up fighting a guy who has this particular sword, who was the turncoat that killed the liege, and now he, oh, you you know this guy, and now he has a purpose again. The other half of the story is Primrose. She's a dancer, and it gets pretty dark. It gets pretty adulty, and 
and dark. Uh, she's uh, she witnesses the murder murder of her father at a young age, and decides to to trail the men and ends up uh, at this uh, city where they would live. And the only way she can support herself is to be taken on as a dancer. And um, she's abused by the by the dude who runs the place and everything until finally she sees the guy, and then she can turn on the master and say I'm done with you and I have to pursue this guy. It's it's pretty solid. I like I said I I'm very much excited for this. This may be this might be the best thing on Switch next year. Wow, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, I mean you have to like that kind of game. You have to like the the old school turn based. JRPG kind of thing, but this is why I got a Switch. I mean, this is why the Switch is the awesome complement to the Xbox because this is not coming to Xbox. This, is, this will probably never see Xbox. So, you know, I have this uh, this other platform so that I can play it. But yeah, straight back to straight back to those Final Fantasy games. The you know Chrono Trigger like combat's not like Chrono Trigger. I don't want to go too far into that. But as far as the um, just kind of the style of play. Cool. All right. Uh, and this is coming out when? Because this was only a demo. <clears throat> yeah, this was the demo. I, all I think we know is 2018, but I haven't. As excited as I am for it, with the with Forza and the Switch and the X coming and all that. All I know is this next year. That's good enough for me for now. Because Cuphead and Forza and the X and going back through like Rise of the Tomb Raider Enhanced and all that. Right. Doom Enhanced. Doom. Uh, uh, so yeah, no, um, yeah. It, it, next year is all I, I know. That's all. I'm all I'm concerned about with it right now. Okay, fair enough. Speaking of Forza, actually yep. got a chance to roll some of that demo, um, and you'll get a chance to see me like driving very badly. <laughs> so I, yeah, I'm gonna. So l- let me let me preface this by saying how I. How the demo is and how Forza 7 is is not necessarily a uh, – uh, or how, I, how I'm feeling about Forza Motorsport 7 is not necessarily indicative of how the game is as a quality game. Um, what I'm going to say doesn't – it kind of cha- you know, doesn't change how good the game is. Um, I, I've – come to realize that I may be um, growing a little out of the motorsport series um, and more just being aligned in the Horizon series, the open world, you know, forces. Um, I got a chance to play the demo like I'm sure a bunch of other people did, uh, and... don't get me wrong. The demo is uh, the the technical aspect of the demo um, is insane. How how they've got from Forza Five to this is impressive, and this is just the base Xbox One. We're not even talking about the the Xbox One X um, and the the quality of what you see when you play this can't at any way, shape, or form be um, indicative of what's on the screen right now. This is simply so you can just get a look at my horrible driving. Um, But the big thing was... Well, you know, at 60 frames per second, you can't do dynamic lighting. You can't do dynamic weather. You can't do blah, 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 blah. Well, Turn 10 said, uh, yeah, you can. And we can keep it at 60 frames per second, uh, which this demo 100% does. I mean, this thing, even in the even in the rain, even in the, the um, you know, the conditions... Um, yeah, unlike Juan, I use the rewind button because I have to. <laughs> um, the the game is so impressive looking that you've got to download the demo and try it. I, circuit racers, like I said, I, I'm and and it's sort of like my thing with first person shooters. Circuit racers are kind of kind of wearing on me a bit, um, so I may wait a little to get this um, until I'm done with Cuphead and until I've 
you know, gone through a couple other, ga- you know, couple other games. Um, and I definitely want to see what the enhancements were made to Horizon 3. So I'm probably going to dip some time into that. But, um, yeah, right. And as we the crew 2 is coming as well. And, and I was one of the few who really enjoyed the crew. But from a technical aspect, this is the stuff that we were seeing in Drive Club that we were told couldn't be done. Now, last year, of course, Forza did rain and project cars to their credit um albeit somehow not i mean i guess they're not using the same techniques in turn 10 you know they are i'm going to say something that's going to trigger some people um turn 10 is the naughty dog of racing genre um when we talk about when we talk about elite developers and naughty dog is one naughty dog is an elite developer they are they are geniuses or they are masters of their craft turn 10 sits at that table straight up other wizards they are definitely wizards they 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 have that they have that stigma and a game like this you can't you know, it, it was Forza Five. You could say, well, you know, they cut corners. They did this. They did that. The the whole cardboard, uh, the cardboard cutouts in the stands. That's all fine and dandy. But now you have a game that has dynamic day night. Look at the sky. The the the. I want you to pay attention to the sky box because the storm has ended, and I want you to see what's happening to the sky as the race is going on. And it went from that that amber grayish amber to the blue skies you're seeing and you're starting to see the skies open up this is the stuff that they are doing now that they couldn't do they couldn't do in 03 in 13 rather i got that but now we're seeing a game that from a technical aspect is giving you dynamic lighting it's giving you dynamic day night is giving you dynamic weather and holding up a solid 60 frames per second if that doesn't impress i don't know what does um you know not to mention the different styles of racing you got the trucks you know now that, that get the trucks are fun in the demo uh, yeah. i did not take any um any footage of the trucks uh you know they this is and yes stick i've heard good things about project cars 2 as well but from a technical aspect Project Cars 2, I think, is still 900p on the Xbox and dips frame rate when you have, you know, cars on the screen and it's raining. Where this just doesn't. It just doesn't. Well, it's because Turn 10, and and this is one of the things I love about Turn 10, and they they've made they prove that frame rate is a design choice. You hear about why doesn't why doesn't this game run at 60 or that? Frame rate is always a design choice first. If, if you target it and you make it priority, you can hit it. Yes, you may have to cut elsewhere, but you know, when you make it a, a religion like Turn 10 does, you see the results. They, they deliver. It's, it's fantastic. I, could, I, have, I have quite a few opinions of this, obviously. I expected that you did. Although You're right. Uh, I before I get to you, said. though, because because I know this is one of the thing, this is one of the demos Peter's played, mm-hmm. and I know he's been silent the last few minutes. So I want his take as well. I want yours, of course, because you are our racing guy. You are you are our expert in this um, in this genre. But I would really like to hear what you know what Peter. This is revving up my engines. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty sure it does. <laughs> yeah, this this demo is great. A very polished demo, and you know, it's a uh, bit of game. I mean, it looks looks fantastic. It's it drives fantastic. It's uh, can't wait to get my hands on it. That's all. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, I mean, a lot of tracks are going to be the same as in the previous Forza's. I mean, they, they but now with dynamic weather, so that's. Adds another, you know, complexity to winning the race, and it's exciting stuff. A guy like me, I'm excited that they're bringing back a couple tracks like Maple Valley. I really can't right. wait to get back to Maple Valley. 
and what I've always been saying is like can't have enough tracks. I don't care about seven hundred cars because you know can drive all seven hundred at the same time or like in in rapid succession. But I, I love to get as many tracks as they possibly can. Yeah, that's that's a big it's a big thing. And that new track, the uh, you know, in the desert, it looks fantastic. It's a tough track. It's uh, it's challenging. Yeah. yeah, it's super tough. It is. But um, it's so uh, so cool when you you know at one point where you have the uh, the sand on, on part of the tracks and stuff. That's just that awesome. was cool. I I you know what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to I've been I've been swearing to myself that I was gonna start making some videos again. And um, this may be one that I do um, where I do a little more in-depth 60 frame per second um, 1080p demo of this um, so that people can see it. And I'm going to get a little practice uh, <laughs> before I do because, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's me driving badly. One thing else I did notice, and I went back to 6 to see if it was um, something that was there, and it's not – I don't know if you just noticed that, but there are two cockpit views in this game. Yeah. Yes. Which there was not. Yep. Yeah. So, um, the uh, the track list that's current. Um, I'm trying to find. Um, there's been some back and forth about the the whether or not the the track list is full or not, but. Um, you know, you have the Dubai Hafeet Mountain Pass, which is the one that's in the demo. Um, you have the Alps, Bathurst, Brands Hatch, Catal uh, Catalonia, Circuit of the Americas, which I thought was a great track. I, I remember that from five. Mm -hmm. Um, Daytona, of course, Dubai, Hockenheim, uh, Homestead, Indy, Sonoma, uh, Laguna Seca, Le Mans. And I can't remember if Le Mans was in six or not. I think it was. Yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lime Rock, Long Beach, the Maple Valley you were talking about. Mm -hmm. um, Monza, Mugello, Nurburgring, of course. Mugello's back. Yes. yes Mugello that's, is back. That's where the trucks were at. Uh, the test track is back. Prague, mm -hmm. which I, I'll tell you what, man. Oh, yeah, Prague. Prague yeah. Prague's a <laughs> kick ass track, man. Mm -hmm. It's pretty. Yeah. Especially at the end when you had to maneuver through the town. Uh, Rio, yeah. which uh, which was a pretty track. Road America, mm -hmm. which was another track I really liked. Road Atlanta, Sebring, Silverstone, uh, Spa, Suzuka, Top Gear, Virginia Suzuka's International Raceway. Huh? Suzuka is a returning track. Yep. Uh, Watkins Glen and Yas Marina, which is also a uh, returning track. So I don't dig on Yas. What about Virginia Speedway? I think is too, isn't it? I that was a DLC for six that was added with the uh, yeah, but yeah, I, I did, it's, which I, I didn't get because I didn't get the DLC. I thought it would so be included in seven. Yep. Yeah, that track was included with the uh, NASCAR DLC. So I mean, yeah. that's four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. That's almost thirty tracks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's what they said. Thirty, uh, thirty tracks, I believe. I remember the uh, yeah, first. Bathurst. I remember the. F I remember five only had like yeah twelve. Five tracks. was so rushed. The the whole console coming out was rushed, and five was rushed with it. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, I'm just I'm talking about going. I mean, where we are then and where we are now is you know this is. Uh, I almost I almost think that this is really the game they were they've been they've been aspiring to to get to. Uh, yeah, it makes sense. Because I don't know what else you can do beyond this, you know, um, as far as you know the overall uh, the overall package. So I, I'm still, you know, whether I get it day one or not, I'm still not sure. But it will come. It will come soon. Um, I might just watch you race a little hmm. bit. Watch. They just got my hundred the other day. So. So yeah, when when we're talking about it, I think you're not alone in the whole, uh, you know, uh, circuit racing versus open world. Uh, that's that's the trend right now. I think in I think it's possible even that in total popularity, uh, that um, Horizon has at least caught, if not passed, you know, Motorsport. There's still uh, less. I, I saw something where there's five million active Motorsport players playing the Motorsport versions of the game, at any given point in time. Um, 
you know. So it's still, it's it's still popular. I I prefer it, but you know me, oh, the whole yeah. racing thing that I do. Um, so or did, yeah. Uh, I love the 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 physics and the driving in this are more precise than you're going to find in in a, in a Horizon game, which is good. I mean, Horizon should be accessible. Uh, this is this is going to be for more like my boy Stick and you know the lap time challenges and such. We've had some mm-hmm. real fun with that, and this is just gorgeous and rock solid, just smooth like butter. Um, you know, it's just fantastic. And there's a lot of things that, you know, uh, someone who's not like a returning longtime Forza guy with me w- may not pick up on or, or, or know, be excited about. But there's all kinds of, like, quality of life improvements and things they're, they're doing with this game that are really exciting to me. Um, on the minor side of that, I'm I'm stoked about the tier rewards. I'm a, I'm a tier 11 rewards player, so I'm going to get half a million a week in credits, uh, you know, as, as the payback for all the... All the time I've spent playing, and that can, that does help me get through those, you know, build up my library of cars. So that's great. <coughs> Additionally, there's going to be badges, loot chests, not like Overwatch, Overwatch loot chests, but boxes or crates you can get uh, depending on your um, on your level on your um, tier. Uh, and also with the, you see a lot more of the, of the drivers in this version of the game. You see a lot more shots of them in their suits, and you can select your your looks and such. That has uh, special limited cosmetics for those tiers, so I'm really excited to be rocking some of the old Forza logos and such on my on my driver, like Forza One, Forza Two. They look great uh, on my Twitter. You can I've got a picture up, and you can see what they look like, and they look, they look fantastic. <coughs> but when it comes to the driving and such, I was a little concerned with the demo because in the race here, the the rain uh, was awesome and the dynamic nature was sweet, but the standing water on the tracks didn't seem to have the same effect as standing water in Forza 6, which was a big thing, that was a big point of Forza 6 was the, the 3D puddles. And I really liked that addition to the game uh, because it, you know, having raced in the rain, it was a more realistic, um, uh, you know, feeling for that. It, that was a great advancement. Uh, I did speak with Dan Greenwald on Twitter about it afterwards. And uh, on the demo, the, the 3D puddles still exist, uh, which is great. I love that. On the demo, the rain comes in quick and short and they have it as kind of a minor... Like the water doesn't get deep. It's not. They're modeling that as, as um, the puddles aren't really the same effect. But the 3D puddles are there, and in lot, yeah, big rains or heavy heavy rains, um, you can have that same effect from six for anyone who was was concerned about that, like I was. Uh, other things include um, their tuning. Hey, may, may I interrupt? Mm-hmm. Do, do we uh, do we need to do a pit stop to change your tires? And all of a sudden, no. you know, can nope, have some rain tires on there. No, they have. They're not going to be modeling that in this game. Uh, they, 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 that didn't make the budget, if you will, for the, for the right. physics or the what they're what they're focused on right now. So rain or shine, you're going to be in the same tires. It's not, you know, terribly realistic, but um, pit, there will be pitting in the game for endurance races and things like that. But it uh, it was described as not part of the core game loop. So that's that's to come in future versions. That's, which which is weird because you will take. I mean, tires will wear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, t- tires have always worn in Forza when you have it on, but in your average race, they're not long enough to have much of an effect at all. In endurance racing, though, it, it can definitely be a thing in the longer races, or when we did, um, you know, private lobbies and we do long races, it, you know, would be a part of it. But <coughs> but another thing that excites me is how they're handling multiplayer and subclasses or uh, homologation. So uh, forever in a day, Forza's had PI, but PI can be you know, one thing or another. Like, for example, in um, Forza Horizon 3, when I was uh, taking over all the leaderboards for the the Bay Area, I found myself, when I was chasing some of the top times, I would have to build a car that was crazy. Like, we're talking C-Class with a 400, 500 points limit, and the particular build that was all over the leaderboard had 1,500 horsepower no tires on it, no other upgrades, just just horsepower. And the only way you can even get to go in one direction is with all of the assists on. It just won't drive. Not drivable without traction control. So, you know, and it's 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 kind of lame to my mind because it, it breaks the class. It's, it's class breaking and you have to drive that car or you have zero chance of being competitive. And that's always kind of annoyed me that there's that it gets down to like that one or two broken car being the one that's all over the leaderboards. 
the homologation is going to make it so that within subclasses, like in the say the C subclass of classic muscle cars, you're not going to be allowed to have more than 500 horsepower. So there's sub restrictions on it, which is going to make more cars competitive. So online and on the online and on the um, the rivals boards and such, there's going to be more competitive cars than just the the one or two. And uh, <laughs> Stick was saying he used some of my tunes. And yeah, some of them, like you said, you have to you have to warp them pretty far to get high up on the boards because of of the way that's worked with PI for so long. But I'm very excited to see see more cars become. I feel more cars will be competitive. You'll be able to have a a fleet of cars that are good for different situations, as opposed to well, I'm gonna I'm gonna be at this track, so this is the only car I can use. And uh, yeah, I'm very 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 excited about that. That's gonna make for some much better multiplayer. Now I have a feeling you're talking about the tunes of the car, not like he didn't use your tune soundtrack or something. No, yeah, I'm talking oh. about you know the whether you're putting like I said, a lot of times it was you would see class breaking stuff like all power and nothing into steering, nothing into grip, nothing into downforce or aerodynamics, nothing in weight removal, none of the other stuff you can do because on certain really long courses, if you have all the power in the world, it doesn't matter what you do with anything else. Uh, so with the homologation that's going to make everything like i said it's going to open up more cars to be competitive it's just it's it's a good move that has been needed in forza for a long time in my opinion when you play i was going to say there's a lot that goes into it that i didn't know about that's pretty awesome yeah no i'm really excited about that feature um the last um I've been doing a lot of the asynchronous multiplayer, but uh, in, in in six I didn't do a whole lot of the of the live multiplayer. Five I, I did a fair amount a fair amount with other uh, other racers that I know from life, and we would set up private leagues, and that's definitely the way to go. If you can get set up with a with a a group of people like like my man Stick puts on with his lap challenges, uh, it's definitely definitely the way to go. So you avoid the uh, randoms in the lobbies that want to drive backwards and things like that. But yeah, no, this game really? is going to be fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's. I don't know how many times that you know you pass somebody and they get mad about it and just wipe you out in the next corner or something. It's, yeah, it's awesome. but it'd be interesting. I don't know how they do it, but it would be interesting if Forza could take on something like iRacing's uh, system where you have to have a license and you have to race clean. And if you crash somebody, you can lose points on that. And if you do it enough time, you can't race with clean people anymore. You have to race with dirty jerks. So oh, yeah. I'd love to see that. I'm not sure how they do it, but that would be. That would be great. I would love that. There's players who play as a cop that sit on the sideline. <laughs> <laughs> They'd just be jerks. So yeah, right. <laughs> nothing against law enforcement, but <laughs> no, but I, mean, I just mean they're not even allowed to do anything unless someone does something bad. You know? Right. I think you should be, be able to have. I think you should be able to have a radar gun. <laughs> See, <laughs> I, we are thinking of a mode that they have to add. Uh, I'm game. But honestly, yeah, this is a flagship game. I mean, it's the real deal, Holyfield. Uh, we're, on the X, we're talking about 4K 60 locked, native, PC high settings. You know, I mean, it's it's things that people were saying couldn't be done. And I'm very excited for it. And that was what I was getting at, was, you know, regardless of, of how I feel about the series or that type of game in general, um, I... I agree with that. I mean, from a technical aspect, um, you know, this is this is the real deal. This is this is what this is stuff that four years ago said couldn't be done, and here it is. Now it's four years later, but you know, this is pretty damn impressive for uh, for this console, uh, if I'm being honest, to to be able to do this. And to do in it a lot of ways, and to do it at 1080p, right? Which... In a lot of ways, five was a step back from four, but this this gets just about all that back. The um, you know four, I liked six better than four for the driving. There's a lot of nostalgia for four, and four had did a lot of things right. The only thing I'm st- I'm seeing missing still though is um, four had the best social clubs. With, with with the cars and and oh, the car clubs yes. and sharing them the like shared garage they have never they've never gone back to that I'm not too sure why but um but yeah that's that's the one thing I would say is missing but other than that uh, I'm really excited for the changes they've made in this version all right 
Okay. So that was Forza. Um, all right. Um, the 29th, baby. Yeah. So. Yeah, 20, for Ultimate users, it's the 29th. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, next on the docket. Very quickly, because I know there's not a ton, but um, he has one main game. What's coming out next week, HTK? Oh, well, we, 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 we just said about? it a little bit, Forza Ultimate, but the biggest one where, you know, we've been waiting for how long? Three years? Forever. Good Cuphead on the 29th. Yes. The no. 29th, yeah, Cuphead, finally. So, this would be Canhead. A meager five days away. Yeah. <laughs> Excited about it. I pre-ordered it, so can't wait. We'll see if we can uh, get past the uh, first opening <laughs> sequence. The impossible <laughs> tutorial. The impossible <laughs> tutorial. We'll see. I don't know if I should stream that, but if I don't make it. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'll kick me off the show. It's like, hey, man, you know you a game. You just have to commit gaming Harry Harry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so who, who, who's all getting And then we can all make fun of you for an hour and a half. I'm yeah. uh, so getting it. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a and it's only nineteen ninety nine, so that's like you know, it fits no, my budget. No brainer. No brainer. So excited about that. Yeah. It looks so good. no quality. Yeah. Um, skipping. Skipping. Yep. Skipping. All right. Anything else? No. Anything else? Uh, uh, not really. Oh. No, there's still some other games. Um, <laughs> I think my, yeah. <laughs> so I just picked a few. I mean, uh, there are like a ton of games coming out, but here are the ones that kind of like piqued my interest. Oh, yeah. Interest. And I thought like maybe yeah, some that. other ones too. Oh. oh, yeah. That's classic. classic. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm talking about things I expect to get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're it's, not getting uh, up at 4 o'clock in the morning and going to your store? No, I might try to sneak into a place that I think no one thinks they're going to be at on the way home for work. Yeah, maybe you get lucky. I have it maybe inside. Get... Ah, okay. Hey, buy Worker. two if they let you. Yeah. Because I would like oh. to have one, but no. I don't think I'm too diehard that I'm going to camp out. I was surprised to hear that this place got the Nest Classic, but I'm told by people that they got them there and so and, and that they didn't have trouble getting them there. So. Huh. That's a, it's a local place. It's not nationwide or anything. So, uh, or I tip people off, but um, for their own areas. But, but yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to sneak out and see if I can get one uh, at a place where that's that's not advertised to have it. Or you can get lucky and some open at midnight too. Like, I don't. Walmart doesn't have pre-orders, but I have a 24-hour Walmart too. Right. Oh, yeah. oh nice. So the. Uh, until they say, like, oh, you, you know, we're going to hand out tickets at 7 a.m. for the people. Yeah, right. Exactly. Hey, good luck. But there won't be a line, so that will be kind well, of Well, I, I have to get one for HTK, so. Oh, yeah. I'll be forever. I can walk through a dead. Walmart. And it's so <laughs> dumb. I have. <laughs> Nate I, lives I, in a Walmart. I have all the stuff. I have. The only thing I don't have on that list is the uh, Star Fox, but I still want it just to sit next to the other one I've got. Yeah, I never had a. Never had a uh, Never had any of the uh, Nintendo ones. My first Nintendo console was uh, was the Wii. So, oh, and now, so I got the uh, classic. NES. I had the N sixty four. I like that thing. And the Super NES. That so now the Super NES uh, oh, will be wow. cool. So I would like to uh, add that to my collection. Pokemon Snap. Stadium. I don't don't collect a whole lot, but those are fun to have. But some other games that are coming out. This is for uh, for Frankie. FIFA eighteen, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yay! <laughs> Yay! Football. Yeah. The uh, actual football. The ones that you play with your feet. <laughs> so it's coming out for the Xbox One, PlayStation. I think even for the 360 and PS3, at least what this website said. Don't know. But it's time for those people to upgrade anyways. <laughs> Some other cool games that I'm uh, stoked about is uh, Pinball FX3. So if you had uh, Pinball FX2, I believe it's a free upgrade, and some tables upgrade for free. So that will be uh, will be awesome. Love Pinball. Nice. The second one was was solid. I got that uh, pretty early in having the the one. Right. Yeah, and the second one, the table that they never upgraded was Buccaneer, and that was my FX1 favorite. So nice. A little pirate shit, but 
I hope they uh, they will remake it at one point in time. I'm willing to pay for it. That's how awesome I thought it was. I don't know. I just love pirates and stuff. Other cool game that's coming out, if you don't have it yet, is the Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition. PlayStation 4, Xbox I'll One, and skip that PC. Too. You don't have any Fallout 4? No, I don't, but I feel like it would take forever, and I'm Call of Duty next month. so Yeah, it's going to take forever. I have it. I played it. I don't know how far I'm along, though. Maybe halfway? Don't know. After seeing that trailer, I'm, I wish Call of Duty was out tomorrow, honestly. Oh, that was yeah, a nice that trailer. Looks, that looks super hot. It did. Yeah, yeah, I pre-ordered that one as well, so can't wait for that one. But that's October, so we're still talking about September games. Uh, another game that's coming out for the Switch is Steam World Dig Two. So oh, that never heard that one. That looks really good, actually. Yeah, I think it's already out for uh, Xbox One and PlayStation Four. So, but now it's finally on the Switch too. So, so those are the kind of the games that uh, you know stuck out to me. There are, there are many more. But these are the ones that I want to highlight. And that's next week in Gaming with HDG. Right. Hot week. Woo. I might actually be able to afford some of this stuff now. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Just saying. Yes. Oh, what? Come on, stick. I sound totally different. <laughs> Americans all sound the same. <laughs> hey, how, how do I sound, sound stick? <laughs> I'm an American. <laughs> uh, I had a room off. Right, that's right. That's right. He got awfully yeah. silent. Mm. Of course, he'll he's probably typing. Anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now everybody is in for a fantastic tweet tweet treat that we're going to uh, finish up the show with. One thing. What? I uh no, I just want I got the new Rig 800 LXs that came out on Friday. Oh, nice. And I love them. Nice. They're wireless. They're pretty, they have um, comes with Dolby Atmos. Nice. And you didn't have to pay the fifteen extra dollars the app on the store. Uh, they just they already added that to the price of the uh, headset. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, I only paid eighty. It was <clears> one fifty, <throat> but GameStop was nice enough to give me a fifty dollar coupon. So nice, sweet. Nice. All right. Definitely worth it if you're in the you know world of headphones. Very nice. Now, now you sound you sound loud and clear during chats and stuff. So that's always a good thing. I used to echo. Mike would always tell me I'm echoing. Yeah, you you used <laughs> to because you. I think you were getting close to your microphone and or the microphone was close to the speakers, and then you just get that. It's just a natural thing. But no, I I now that I think of it, yesterday, yesterday you sounded okay. Thank you. I, I think you sound okay, too. Eh, once in a while. <laughs> I, I don't right. know. I still listen to your music in my car, so. That's, that's, um, that's flattering, dude. I mean, seriously, I don't know what to say to that. That is absolutely flattering. I, wow. I, I just love music. And I do, I like, too. One of my favorite channels on SiriusXM is the cover channel. I yes. like to hear how everyone puts their own, you know, touch on a song. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. I haven't. I don't have Sirius XM, so I, I don't get to. If listen. you ever want to use my login, let me know. So. I can let you do that. Okay. So, all right. Next and last on the docket here. My favorite segment. Our favorite segment. Yep, I agree with that. One day I'll have a movie segment. Uh, there we go. There we go. Don't know what happened there. <laughs> it's a computer. Right. I should do a full playthrough on that. That would be cool. <laughs> I'm 
have to put it on the backlog though because uh, all the new stuff coming next this week. I want to see you play that. All right. Your, um, Which one, the Turtles? Steel Battalion. Oh yeah, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh okay. See, I'm watching it on YouTube, so it's a little behind. Fair enough. All right. So, this is this is going to be something no one has ever seen before. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, In a retro wreck. Right. Yeah, uh, so in one of our previous weeks we missed, we had the uh, 40th? Is that right? 40th? Yeah. yeah. 40th anniversary of the uh, release of the Atari 2600. And so I got motivated to bust mine out and play some, and then I got motivated to uh, record some of that and just do a little... Those games are so simple and such one screen that um, I want to knock out a couple in a, in a single retro rec here. So uh, what we're going to do is um, I want to spe- uh, specify right up front that because this is a an RF output, <laughs> uh, getting it onto my Elgato was a bit of a challenge, and it doesn't pick up all of the layers so that you'll see some vagaries here where, like in Pac-Man, for example, you won't see all four ghosts because they're on different layers and aren't showing up. But you'll get the gist. So we can go ahead and kick it off. All right, we are uh, mostly we're, we're focused on the games this week, more than the console itself. We're bringing five games. We're going to start with Space Invaders, circa 1980. It was programmed by Rick Maurer, Maurer, and licensed by Tato, who had done the arcade version. Uh, originally, that arcade came out in 1978. Uh, it was a 2D fixed shooter, uh, single player or two player alternating. Uh, you control a laser cannon which moves horizontally only, <laughs> and uh, you fire at the aliens. Uh, you can have one shot on the screen at a time. Oh, hell and, yeah. I remember this game. Sorry. I really like it. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> I actually have played one of your retro wrecks. Yes! I, I believe it. Uh, the uh, purpose is to uh, kill the, uh, assault the advancing aliens and the mystery ship that flies by. Uh, the aliens, as they move further and are decreased in number, get, will move faster. And you're protected by three uh, shields that are capable of being destroyed by many shots of uh, either you or the or the uh, invading aliens. Uh, the score goes... And basically, like all the games back then, it was all about getting a score. And you score five points <coughs> for each alien per row. So the first row, aliens are worth five points. Second are worth ten, so on and so forth. At uh, 1,500 points, you get an extra life. And that is it. That's all you get. And once you clear it out, it starts the next wave, and you get the kind of iconic doop, 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 doop uh, sound effect of the move, and you're you're back to kill the next wave. And um, yeah, it was uh, it's a really big game in its day. Uh, it was one of the one of the early arcade hits, if you will. Uh, the 2600 version, though, actually quadrupled the game sales and made it the first killer app for consoles. It was the first uh, everyone had to have their Space Invaders. At home, and this was uh, this was the console to get it on at the time. The uh, game is over when the la- your last laser cannon is destroyed, or if you follow up and the aliens uh, get to the surface. That's that's game as well, which is actually illustrated here because I got tossed up at which one I wanted to kill first and forgot that if they're on the far end, they do the reset trick quicker and, and at the bottom. <laughs> that is <laughs> Space Invaders from 1980, yeah. uh, and then we move on to Pac Man. <clears throat> this is a really interesting Definitely one. I've never heard of this. Right. This is really interesting. It was um, a 1982, originally programmed by Todd Fry, licensed by Namco America, of the arcade classic, <coughs> which was 1980. It's a single player or alternating two player. And everyone knows the idea of Pac Man. You're in a maze. Uh, in this one, you have wafers, which they called them wafers, probably because they had to have that shape due to the limitations. Uh, and the power pills. And you. Uh, your objective is to avoid the ghost and clear the wafers of the map from the maze. And uh, you can get eat the power pill and make the ghost vulnerable for a short period of time. And it's, you know, it's Pac-Man. Um, this one has a, a vitamin as opposed to the fruit because, again, the limitations. It's uh, like a big square that shows up under the ghost box. And uh, you lose life if a ghost touches you. Uh, game is over when you run out of lives. Uh, in this version, you actually get a bonus life each time you clear a maze. So you could go for some time if you were pretty decent at it. Uh, the port is actually the best-selling 2600 game of all time. It sold 7 million copies, which is pretty incredible 
for the day. Uh, that's, that's a really big number. Uh, it was the best-selling home video game at the time of release. Uh, it's, uh, it's amazing because it's run on effectively 32 times less RAM than the arcade machine and on one-fourth of the read-only memory. And so it really had some limitations, obviously, which made it uh, not very well received. Even though it sold so many, critically, it was a bomb because it didn't resemble Pac-Man enough and disastrous. Yeah, it was horrible. I remember it. Yep, pretty much. So we move on to Defender, uh, which is 1982, and it was programmed by Bob Polaro and licensed by Williams Electronics, originally a 1981 Williams Electronics arcade cabinet. It's a one- or two-player alternating side-scrolling shooter, and you control a, uh, a ship defending a planet from alien invaders. There's uh, various types of invaders, but the main ones are uh, landers or abductors, and uh, they will move down to the city level, and you'll see tiny dots that represent people, and they'll give a chirp when they're beamed or picked up, and if they're, t- they're taken to the top of the screen, they're converted into mutants, which are highly aggressive and come hunt the player and they're red. Kind of difficult to see in this version, but uh, but the red ones will come hunt you. And once you clear all the aliens, you move on to the next level, so on and so forth. You get a new ship every 1,200 points, I want to say, or 12,000, I should say. Uh, if all the humans are abducted, the planet explodes, leading, leaving a map of just mutants, which you have to clear to uh, continue. It was praised in its time for its difficulty, and it's considered one of the top 30 uh, 2600 games. Then we have Missile Command, 1981, uh, programmed by Rob Fulop, originally 1980 Atari arcade cabinet. It's a one and two player alternating shoot 'em up. And in this one, you control a missile base at the bottom, and you can fire missiles at incoming smart bombs, missiles, ballistic missiles, MIRVs enemy planes, and the idea is to protect the six cities, and the pace on this game gets pretty crazy. Um, uh, the, uh, every time you uh, lose a city, you can rebuild it for 10,000 uh, 10, points scored. If the missile base in the center gets hit, you lose one magazine of 10 missiles. You have 30 missiles to get through each round, so you kind of have to budget yourself there. As a, uh, a fun Easter egg, if you use all your missiles in round 13 without scoring a point, the uh, right city turns into the initials RF for Rob Fulop, the programmer, uh, which was actually the second Easter egg ever acknowledged by Atari. And uh, it was a, a, a port of a very popular and very difficult arcade game. And one of one of ones that was one of my first uh, you know, home gaming memories. Uh, just it's inevitable you're going to get beat down by this game. There's just it's just a matter of what kind of score you can get before it happens. And then the world explodes in a big sound effect, uh, big, a big explosion. The um, arcade game actually said the end, like the end of the world. Uh, you know, like a statement against uh, of, of the time against weapons, right? So this is Berserk, and it's the last of our our little montage of 2600 games this week. It's 1982, programmed by Dan Hitchens, licensed by Stern Electronics, originally a 1980s, an 1980 arcade cabinet. It's uh, another maze game, but in this one, you're, you're not fleeing the ghosts. You're an armed uh, spaceman on a, uh, on a, wrecked on a planet that's made of mazes filled with killer robots that are dumb as hell. And uh, <laughs> they will... They will <laughs> Famous for being dumb, they'll move into their you know the path of of their own sh- shots or into walls, which are electrified. Can't touch the walls, or they can't either. And you're pursued by evil Otto, which is the smiley face you'll see. He's on the same layer as the player character, so the player character disappears when he's on the screen. This video, but but the evil evil Otto is completely invulnerable and just a, a, a maniacal smiling face ball that will kill you and bounce up and down on your bloody pulp. Oh gosh. And yeah, it was like nightmarish when I was a kid, right? Uh, the arcade version actually had some really kind of first time sophisticated voice. And it was all, you know, that that typical robo voice, but it was like, get the intruder, get the human. And it was uh, kind of nightmarish as a kid, actually. And the, this is back when your imagination was, was as important as the graphics, right? <laughs> Every <laughs> thousand or two thousand points, you get a free life. Uh, the, in the Atari version, you can, there's actually a, a difficulty mode where Evil Auto can be uh, slowed. He can, you can kill him, make him disappear for a while, and then he'll be back, as always. Um, the Atari oh, version of... 
Right. The Atari version uh, couldn't handle the voices, so they left that part out. But, uh, but yeah, just uh, another home port of what was a classic arcade game at the time. And this is this is as close as you can get at the time. This is back when arcades were still really a thing. The uh, it was well received. <coughs> this version of the game in 2010, IGN ranked it. I'm sorry, IGN ranked Evil Auto as the 78th of the top 100 villains villains ever. Damn. So there you have it. That is my little quick rundown of uh, five of the kind of iconic Atari games. I, I purposely left off some because these were all arcade games licensed by Atari. I wanted to hold off on doing Activision games, which there's a ton of great Activision games for the system, uh, and, and, and do those maybe as their own at another time, another rundown of, uh, of the greats like it. Pitfall and such. Yep. And then you should do a slate of Magic games. Yeah, yep, exactly, like uh, Cosmic Arc and uh, Atlantis. And, Cosmic Arc, oh my god. Yep. Atlantis. But yeah, no. I, Atlantis. When, when you look at it nowadays, it seems so archaic, but it's kind of amazing that you can even have a game on the same because it's got 128 bits of RAM. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and it's just, it's just crazy. I mean, you talk about, you know, where how far it's come... In the time, of course, it's been 40, 40 years. But yeah, that's that's where it all started for me. And um, if the if the viewers, if you guys like the the Atari rundowns like that, I'd be more than happy to do another one with the, those other those other uh, publishers of games for the system, like uh, iMagic and uh, and Activision, of course. I did I did manage to get back to the screen and say Cooper, see Cooper saying what no pitfall, but yeah, that's definitely something that's uh, on the list. It, I do have it somewhere in this. Oh. It's not in great shape, but Pitfall. Still works. So, that's what matters. Yep, that's what matters. So there it is. Pit, Pitfall Harry Jungle Adventure. So yeah, I remember we'll do, we'll Pitfall 2 having music. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. But uh, So that is, uh, I, I don't know if I'd really call it retro recommendation. I mean, um, the I, I enjoyed it because I have memories with it. I think um, I think this is where the line's going to be drawn for people who have kids. I don't think their kids are going to dig this game. I think they're going to look at it and be like, what is that? Right. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's fantastic. Uh, right down to the old, the old trusty stick and button. I mean, that's, that's all you need, right? Yeah, your controller's not going to break. Or... Well, I hope not, because <laughs> things older than me. No, I just meant, you know, that's how long it lasts. Our controller's... Oh crap! I'm six months into it. Guess I need to buy a new one. And your shoulder button. But yeah, I, think... I believe you can use a Genesis gamepad on that. It does oh, have that's... the same. It does have the same part. I've never tried it, it so I'm something to look at. But I yeah, it does use the same type of connection. I believe that you can. That'd be worth looking at. No. Uh, that's you know, Mike's tip uh, of the week. Of that list, my favorite game out of that list was Defender. Yeah, Defender was real good. I wish the capture would have worked a little better for that one, but um, <coughs> that's one I definitely played a lot of, and uh, it, it's a real, real challenging game. Uh, you can always tell, you know, the limitations of the console is that every time you shot, you disappeared for a second. Yeah, and it was, was part that, of the... Yeah, it, it's it just was trying to do a lot for for what it could do, uh, and and honestly, the guys who put these games out, they did they did basically magic. They they did some. Some some pretty cool stuff to get these things out. I mean, the guy who put uh, Pac-Man out, even though it was derided for being a terrible and obviously terrible looking port of Pac-Man, that loses all the charm of Pac-Man with the music gone and and and, and everything. Um, the, you know, the time frame that he did that in and the restrictions he had to work with to get anything that even remotely resembles Pac-Man is just magic. And uh, it's it's interesting to me too that of the five, that one sold the most. I mean, Pac Man was the runaway success just because it had the name on it. Well, yeah, but it was, but it was also kind of the the start of the decline of the whole Atari brand because they they as much as it sold awesome, they made one for every Atari in the wild and yes. more. Expect people to buy Ataris for it, which turned out to be not the not the greatest no. business decision. And then, and then, and then came, came ET. Ah, uh, and then came yeah. I see. I was trying to get there. You beat me to it. Because I yeah, actually, that was definitely. The, and then came ET. Yep. You know, in that game, I think it really does, it gets a bad rap. It's a better game 
then yeah, when you're when you're when you're eight years old, it's fine. So like Superman, like Superman for the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. When you're eight years old, it's fine. The problem with ET was it was just so hard to play. Mm-hmm. And and the guy who who developed it, of course, had to do it in like four to six weeks with nothing, so that they could rush it out the door uh, to get you know to get it because Spielberg wanted it so badly. Yep. And so it just got trashed. I mean, it's it just it it, it, it it's not the game that sunk. The the the, you know, it's not the game that crashed the industry. I mean, that's you know, uh, Howard Scott Warshaw, by the way, is the one who developed that. Um, yep. But it 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 helped. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, no, I've always thought that game got a bit of a bum rap. It's a it's a you know, it's people that put it on the worst of all time list because of what it did to Atari and its <clears throat> precarious position at the time, but. But really, there are so many cartridges that were worse. Oh, absolutely. So the problem worse. is is that one was such a commercial failure because of the game it was. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, look, I mean, yeah, Angry Video Game Nerd made a movie about it. Uh, Microsoft uh, kind of, uh, you know, co-sponsored a movie about it. Game over. I highly suggest, by the way. I still have that, actually. Yeah, I highly suggest, and I and I, and both of them because James's James's movie is funny as hell. Um, if you get a chance, watch them both. And they're two different two different games from two different angle or two different movies from two different angles. But if you want to see um, that whole story about. Uh, uh, about E.T. and about the 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 famous um, you know landfill and and that kind of thing, uh, you know the landfill and and uh, Alamogordo. If you want to if you want to get, I highly recommend watching at least Game Over, but I also recommend watching uh, James Rolfe's movie because it's just funny. It's always, uh, it amazed me that they pulled working cartridges out of that land. Out of that I was amazed they pulled them out, put them in, and they. Worked. Yep. That was crazy. But I appreciate everyone, um, you know, who stuck out for the uh, the retro there, and uh, we'll get another one coming. I'll get another one in the pipe for next week, and uh, some 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 couple weeks down the road, I'll 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 revisit some more of these. Um, I'll put it in the console rotation. Oh, sweet. All right. I even knew about these ones, so that's pretty cool. Well, some of these are like you know legendary. I mean, Space Invaders. Oh, thank you. I I was proud of myself. Okay, yeah. come on. So. All right, let's uh let's call it a night, guys. We've actually gone two hours. I couldn't believe it. And it's time. Yeah. For, it's time for some of us to go to bed and some of us to get back to playing Destiny. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah. Off, off. So. I don't know who that is. Uh, <laughs> anything else no. before we roll out for the night? Um. Oh yeah, uh, my movie recommendation. Make sure to check out the new Tomb Raider trailer. It actually looks good, and I hope that it lives up to the hype. Is it Angelina Jolie good though? I don't know. I really like the chick. I bet you it's better. Because I really like the Angelina. Does she have a long neck or a short neck? Uh, that picture, man. That poster was so bad. But yeah, that poster was really stupid. I don't get the point of that. Yeah, that was. <laughs> so. Maybe she stuck her neck out. Oh yeah, there you go. I mean, All right. Well, so uh, what else did you see? Did you, you were talking about another movie you saw. Um, what did I recently just see? I saw Kingsman, the Golden Circle. Ah, yes. Yeah. And yeah. how was that? Excellent. I there is one huge cameo that he's actually in it for the whole movie that I won't give away, but just check it out. If you like the first one, I actually like this one better than the second one. Okay. Hmm. And then come and talk to me on Twitter or whatever, on or next Sunday. That way we can talk about the cameo together since I don't want to give it away. All right. Like, I can't talk about it HGK. He'll be like, is the DVD out yet? So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. DVD, Blu-ray rentals. Well, obviously, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. I haven't looked. How many, uh, how many dislikes do we have this week, boys? Uh, average amount. 
Okay. We're doubled though. We're doubled likes, so that's what. Yay. We're that's always good. It's, well, it's all about the likes. We don't care about the dislikes. That's Those right. People, yeah. Thanks for watching. Have anything though. better to do? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for thanks watching. Thanks for the thanks for the thanks for the view. They don't uh, know that we get more. And thanks for from contributing. Them, so. I mean, you guys came in and 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 uh, fed into the conversation with the chat. You guys didn't, didn't just sit there. You guys, I really appreciate the the chat. Yeah, our chat room is one of the best. Yes, I was going to say there since we didn't have a lot to talk about. I mean, everybody Sorry. still came, and I really appreciate everything that you, everyone yeah. did. Yeah, especially for us being off for a couple of weeks, and I mean, it's just been. Hey, I'm looking for a good. I'm looking for my original. There it is. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I mean, this is um, this is great, and of course, you know, these are our friends, you know, and our our gaming buddies, and um, we appreciate you guys a ton. So, uh, all right, so. We will, uh, of course, be back next week. Pen talk about nothing. some Cuphead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Everybody a lot of Cuphead to talk about. about. Cuphead. And, you better uh, stream it so I can watch it. Yeah, there's still some other... I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to... Did you put that um, Octo... What's not... Uh, video... Was that up on your channel? Uh, yeah, but you, you can definitely also... Well, I'll link, I'll link to yours, and then if you have another one, I'll, I'll throw up on ours. Um, cool. Also, uh, I have to finish getting up the Mortal Kombat series, which there's a couple of videos left, and uh, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to get some new content up. It's just been, man, it's been tough. I, I'm, it has. I, I, now I, when you leave, you have to say finish him. Yeah, it's it's really it's really crazy to know I hadn't turned on my console in two weeks. It was just I, I it it was hard for me to un, to to realize that. Um, but I got some light at the end of the tunnel and, uh, um, some time is, is starting to free up at night. So, um, I'm going to get forward back to, to seeing you back on the battlefield. Yep. Very, very soon. So, all right, guys, everybody have a great week. Um, uh, thanks for, thanks for the wonderful chat. Thank you guys as always. Um, do not forget, of course, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And, uh, man, everybody have a great week. And we'll see you soon. Woo -woo. Play on, gamers. Game, Game on. Finish him. Finish him. Legendary Fury. <laughs> and, yes, I have to go through the video once again. Thanks, Frankie. <laughs> Is this a new song? I've had it for a couple weeks. You're welcome, Dick. <laughs>